Man, I wish it was that easy. My name is Matt Schwartz and I'm the Welding Geek. And if you want to see how I really made the Mandalorian's pauldrons, stay tuned to the video. All right, we're gonna start out with my templates that I've drawn up here in AutoCAD. I'm gonna do my usual, um, cut them out and paste them down with a 3M High Strength 90 spray. Um, squeegee them out and then shear them on the shear. I'm gonna shear out the pieces first and then I'll hit the straights. All right, now I'm moving on to the bandsaw. I'm the bandsaw on high speed with a fine tooth um, blade and just cutting out the radiuses here. Okay, back to the slip roller. I'm gonna slip roll these into a nice curve to get it started. This little machine is called a shrinker and what's it's, what it's doing is grabbing the material and squeezing it together, shrinking the material. And I'm just doing this to give it, to give the, the material the way that it wants to go on the planishing machine. Just giving it a little extra head start. Now that I've got my shrinks in, I'm going to go ahead and anneal both of my, my pieces here to make them softer, to make it easier to hammer and then to planish. So I'm just using a Sharpie marker here and I'm going to burn it off and Sharpie burns off at the temperature that aluminum anneal, anneals similar to acetylene soot. Um, so this is just softening up the material going to make it easier for me to hammer and planish. After the annealing process it's time to have some fun and beat the living snot out of the shoulder bell. I'm going to, I'm going to Beat on a little bit and then I'm going to take it over to the shrinker and just start pulling my edges in a um, little bit by little bit just to get this thing to start to dome out. And it's a lot of hammer work and a lot of shrinking to get started. Alright, on to the planishing hammer. And what this tool does is it has a, a series of bottom dies anywhere from three quarters of an inch radius to 36 inch radius. I'm starting off here with a one inch radius tool and I'm just trying to be aggressive with the material trying to stretch it all out to get the dome shape that we're looking for. Um, and how it does this is it basically like a hammer and a dolly just really fast though and it's just smashing the material stretching it out and as the material stretches it domes. Like the material has to go somewhere. So you start with a small radius and you just start working up to your the radius that you want which I'll eventually um, probably use a six or a nine inch radius to get the nice tight um, smooth curve that I want. And this is the desired effect that we're looking for. A nice shiny surface. It's not perfect, um, but it's, it's nice and domed and shiny. And that's what happens when you use those higher radius tools like the 9 or the 12. Um, it smooths it out instead of making it so bumpy. All right, now I'm going to make the top pieces. Oh, I don't even know what to call these. But I'm just showing you my measurements that I'm using. I'm, I don't have a drawing for these. I'm just going to do them by hand. So I'm just showing you uh, the measurements. I share out my little strips pieces here. And you'll see what these are here in a minute. These are the top little middle section. Um, and how I'm doing this is I'm making two angles and I'm going to lay one on top of the other. And and I'll show you why here in a minute and just showing you my dimensions on the calipers. Sometimes this autofocus doesn't quite focus the way I want, um, but it will show up here in a minute. So as I'm going through this here, you kind of, and I'll explain more here in a minute what exactly it, that it is I am doing.
All right, I'm gonna make my pieces into angles now. Just bending one is a half inch leg and the other is a 9 16 inch leg. And the reason why is I'm gonna stack these on top of each other to make a channel. My shrinker, in my shrinker jaws, I can't fit a channel that size. So I'm basically making two pieces and then I'm gonna shrink and stretch them accordingly to make a channel like so. And the reason why I went half and 9 16 is so those legs are the same size after you stack one on top of the other. Now I'm going to lay out about to where I think these channels need to fit. Just with some tape. This is a visual guide to where I need to fit these with the shrinker and the stretcher. Alright, the shrinker and the step stretcher. And you might be saying, what the heck is a shrinker and a stretcher? These tools, the shrinker will actually pull the material together, causing the metal to shrink, causing my piece to curve. So you can kind of see as I'm working the handle, it's curving more and curving more. And um, basically the center of those jaws is where you want to shrink. Um, the blue one is the shrinker, the gray one is the stretcher, and the stretcher just does the opposite. It pulls the metal apart causing it to, to, to move the other way. So when you over shrink, you can take it over to the stretcher and it will stretch it back out. And I'm just gonna go back and forth here in between these two. It's a bad camera angle, I'll fix it here in a second, but I'm just trying to shrink each angle to fit my shoulder bell. And as I get both pieces shrunk and stretched the way I want them to be, this is the des desired effect that I'm going after, making a channel that fits along that center side, just like the Mandalorian's pauldrons have. All right, I'm showing you three quarters of an inch, which is the offset that I'm making for this bead that I'm gonna put in here because it looks like the pauldrons have a slight inset on the inside edge. So I'm just gonna scribe a line with my calipers here and I'm making my way over to the, my beading tool and put a slight bead in there. And that's what I'm doing here. This little motorized tool here has a set of dies. It's multi-purpose. I'm using the bead, beading dies right now on it. And you just squeeze it down in there, hit the pedal, and you can see how it's rolling a bead in the metal. Super awesome tool. So it has a little, you can see the bead in there. Alright, time to tack these um, angles together to make a channel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Um, the material that I've been using has been 080 3003 aluminum. I've got my typical 16th inch 2% thoriated tungsten, um, my Miller welder, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and tack these together. And also I'm going to sand off the shrinking and the stretching marks to make it look like a nice smooth piece.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get my, my new channel situated here on the pauldron and get it welded on. All right, now I have my, my center sections here welded onto my pauldrons and the channels welded up. All right, next up, I am going to make a set of templates out of masking tape to make the trim pieces for these pauldrons. And I'm just gonna layer up three or four layers of masking tape and trim them to how I want those little trim pieces to fit. So I'm gonna stack a bunch up here, trim them with a razor blade, and those will be my templates to cut out with the aluminum. So now that I have my templates made, I'm going to just peel them off, um, lay them on my sheet metal like a sticker, and I will trim around those um, with the bandsaw here in a second. Just making little stickers, making life easy. Making my way over to the bandsaw, and I'm just gonna trim right around these templates, like so. So these trim pieces are actually made out of eighth inch, 50-52 uh, is what I'm using um, for the back ones because they're a little thicker and then just 063-3003 uh, for the front trim pieces to give it that look of different depth. Now that I'm done with the bandsaw, I'm going to get these smoothed out D-Bird using my angle head grinder and a scotch bright pad. So I don't want my trim pieces fighting against me, so I'm going to soften them up. I'm going to kneel them. So I'm just going to hit them with a the Sharpie again and hit them with a the torch, get them softened up so I can just clamp them nice and smoothly onto my piece. Now that they're annealed, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp them into place and tack them on the, uh, the, the edges here um, just to get them settled into place. And then I'm going to weld around the whole entire outside um, and then sand it down to make it look like one piece.
decided now I want to make an internal panel to thicken these up. It looks like in the show that these pauldrons stand off of the shoulders pretty far. Um, and I'm hoping to achieve that by putting this internal panel in. Um, I made a template out of poster board. And I'm going to go ahead and get it cut out and then I'll roll it on the slip roll. Now that I have it close to fitting, I'm going to go ahead and just clamp it down into place, work my way all the way around it, tacking it on this edge, and get it all tacked into place. All right, it is time to make this thing permanent. I'm using my, like I said, 2% thoriated 16th inch tungsten. I'm running argon gas, and I'm using 4043 aluminum rod to make all my welds on this piece. I'm using what's called a step weld method. This helps you um, control the heat a little better. And I'm just gonna weld all the seams up here. Now that I have everything welded together, I'm going to go ahead and just make a smoothing pass all the way around this piece. It just helps when you when I go to grind these um, to make it a little more uniform and a little easier to sand. All right, it's metal finishing time. And I'm going to start off with the 80 grit sanding disc um, and try to even up all my edges trying to make it just look like one cohesive piece of metal instead of multiple pieces. Um, that's what I'm trying to achieve here with the metal finishing. This, this process takes a little bit of time and a lot of patience so bear with me as I go through it here. Um, I'm just going to rough sand everything, get a scotch bright pad, try to smooth it out a little bit and then a DA and then onto the DynaBraid just each step making it a little smoother and a little cleaner and a little nicer.
right, I got it all metal finished. I'm looking really good. One last step I need to do, actually second to the last step, is I'm gonna take it over to the sandblaster and sandblast it. And then you will see what that looks like. All right, elbow grease time. I'm just using some metal polish here after it's been sandblasted, and I'm just polishing it. Not too much, I don't want it. I, I know the his pieces look mirror finished, and they probably are, but I want to leave it slightly gritty to make it look like that grayish silver sheen. And all right, that's the pauldrons video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Some more welding and planishing and shining and making them look cool. I actually plan on making this whole kit, so subscribe if you wanna see me make the soft parts and just everything else. Um, the next video coming up is the little uh, belt pieces and boot pieces, just a little greeblies, a quick little video on those. Um, and then I've got the, the thigh plates and the, the hip plates and the butt plate and the back plate and the, the shore trooper leg piece that he's got. I've got all that metal work yet to do. I plan on doing all the soft parts. So if you wanna see me build through this whole kit, I'm gonna try to make as many of these pieces as I possibly can. Um, stay tuned to my, my channel, subscribe, like, um, comment with any questions or anything else you'd like to say. Uh, man, I've been really enjoying the comments. You guys are awesome. Thanks for all the, the compliments and all that, man. It means a whole lot, and thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. Uh, my name is Matt Schwartz, and I'm the Welding Geek.